Well, it turns out signing your good players to a contract extension isn't that difficult. After all, Derek Brown is here to stay in Carolina. We'll talk about it right here on Locked On Panthers. You are Locked On Panthers, your daily Carolina Panthers podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome in to another edition of the Locked On Panthers podcast, a part of the Locked On Podcast Network. I'm your host, as always, Julian Council, talking Carolina Panthers with you every Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, your team every day. That's our motto here on the Locked On Podcast Network. Subscribe or follow the show for free on YouTube or wherever you listen to your favorite podcast. And be sure to follow me, Julian Council, On Twitter, at Julian Council, where on Fridays, like I literally just did, I had my Friday mailbag episode premiering as this news dropped, and I went back to see the comments live in the chat, people saying, the Panthers just signed Derek Brown, the Panthers just signed Derek Brown. Well, I recorded that episode last night, and I premiered on Fridays at noon. So maybe I'll just premiere it earlier in the event that breaking news happens. Either way, at me or DM me on Twitter at Julian Council to get your questions in for next Friday's edition of the weekly Friday mailbag right here on Locked on Panthers. We are here, an emergency episode on a Friday afternoon as the Carolina Panthers have signed Derek Brown to a contract extension. Thank God. It turns out it's not that difficult after all to sign your good players to a new deal. That's what you do. That's what smart teams are supposed to do. If you have a guy that comes in, especially as a first round pick like Derek Brown, he comes in, he stays healthy. He plays at an elite level last year, 103 tackles, the most by a defensive lineman in the history of the NFL. They've been playing football in the National Football League for over 100 years, and no one has had more tackles in a single season than Derek Brown did last year as an interior defensive lineman. He is a stud. He seems to be an oh, all around good person. Haven't heard any off the field stuff. So you combine that with he stays healthy. He plays well, no issues off the field. Yeah. Those are the guys you want to sign. Now the Panthers, they've signed those guys in the past and traded them. They decided not to sign those guys and then traded them. This was a simple move for the Panthers to extend Derrick Brown to what is a four-year, $96 million extension that includes $63.165 million guaranteed. Congratulations to Derrick Brown and his family, his agents, Drew Rosenhaus, Jason Rosenhaus, and Robert Bailey. Got this deal done with Panthers general manager and president of football operations, Dan Morgan, and their new executive VP of football operations, Brant Tillis, who has done, I think, a magnificent job since coming over from Kansas City when it comes to the contracts Panthers have signed players to this offseason, the way that they have handled the cap. This is a good deal. And I honestly don't have that much to say. Like We're going to do an emergency episode here, but there's not too much to say. Maybe I'll look at the comments live here on YouTube. And if you guys have any thoughts, I'll read those and maybe answer some questions. But other than that, not much really to say. They signed Derek Brown to a contract extension. This is something that I had on my offseason to-do list. So let me go ahead and go to my notes app here and click that one off as a check as I'm happy that has happened. Looking at it cap-wise as far as how that impacts the Panthers, uh, the Carolina Panthers salary cap, looking at over the cap.com prior to this move, was right at $3 million with an extension. Derek Brown, that opens up $8.4 million. So the Panthers now have $11.4 million of salary cap space, which is a good thing as they head into the draft. You got to sign their draft class. And it would also be nice to potentially have some money available for, I don't know, Stephon Gilmore homecoming here in Carolina and whoever else the Panthers may be identifying. You know, T. Higgins, I'd still love to see a trade for him. That would be nice. So the Panthers now open up some cap space by extending Derek Brown. Looking at his contract, so four years, $96 million. Let me pull up my calculator here to do the math. That is $24 million annually. That would put him looking at this right on line with Quentin Williams from the New York Jets. And he's actually, he being Derek Brown, is getting more money guaranteed than Quentin Williams. Williams has a $96 million contract. 
that he's getting $66 million. Oh, so now he's getting less. I looked at the wrong one. Well, I guess fully guaranteed 47, but he has 66 million guarantees. Derek Brown's getting, getting just $3 million less in guarantees from the Panthers and what Quinn and Williams is getting from the Jets, but he's right there on par with the top five defensive linemen as far as their contracts go. Justin Matabike from the Ravens, he got a new deal this offseason, $98 million. He's getting $75.5 million total guaranteed, fully guaranteed $48.5 million. He's at $24.5 million as far as his average annual value, and he's a guy who gets after the passer, and you're going to pay those guys just to take more than Derek Brown, who did show last year that he has grown in that area. That's not necessarily what we're expecting out of him every single Sunday. What you are expecting out of him is to be a great run stopper and to really hold it down there in the interior of the defensive line, especially last year when he had guys like uh, Deshaun Williams and Nick Thurman and LeBron Ray and Shai Tuttle and the rest who just did not do the best job around Derek. And what did he do? He set a NFL record for most tackles by a defensive lineman in the history of the league. Christian Wilkins, he also signed a new deal this offseason. He got $110 million, 82.7 in guarantees. That's 27.5, and I believe that was a five-year deal, so really a three-year deal when you look at that. Aaron Donald, who's now retired, he was on a $95 million contract of total value. And then Chris Jones got it insane deal, especially at the age of 30, $158.7 million. So we have now Derek Brown here, who's tied for the fourth highest contract in the NFL as Aaron Donald, for whatever reason, has not been removed from over the cap.com. So Chris Jones with number one, Christian Wilkins, Justin Matty BK, Quentin Williams, and Derek Brown. And I believe, let me look at Derek Brown's age. I want to say he's right there at the same age as those guys. He's 26. So he's actually a year younger than Wilkins. Not Wilkins, 29. He's a year younger than Matty BK and Quentin Williams. Jeffrey Simmons, another player who has a big time deal. He is 27. He got 94. So right there on par with all the top interior defensive linemen. Good to see that for Derek Brown. And I don't think there can be much debate over whether this is the right decision by the Carolina Panthers because I think it simply was. I got to do a quick ad read as that's what Locked On asked me to do whenever I do something like this. So quickly, eBay Motors, by the way, I got to tell you all about them. Let me find the read right here. Passion, drive, and patience. The formula for winning championships is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance from superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to turn your car into the MVP and bring home huge wins like re-signing Derek Brown. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only, exclusion supply. eBay Guaranteed Fit, only available to U.S. customers. Looking at the chat real quick here on YouTube as we are live. And again, subscribe to the show. If you ever miss any of these live episodes, it's going to be right there on the channel later on. And for the podcast people, it's going to be right there in your podcast feeds whenever I get it to you, which will pretty much be like a couple minutes after this is recorded. Uh, we got people saying, let's go. We did a good thing. Big W. Let's go. I love it. Yeah, I'm happy about that. Feels like I can finally get a Derek Brown jersey. That's what Jordan Meyer says. Yes and no. Because let's not forget, they did trade DJ and Christian. My hope, though, is that with Bryce Young here, Dave Canales coming over to work on his fundamentals, his footwork and all that, and then adding guys like Deontay Johnson, bringing in Damian Lewis, bringing in Robert Hunt to sure up the interior of the offensive line. We'll see how Austin Corbett plays at center. And I think Icky is going to be better at left tackle this year. And I still believe in him and Taylor Moten. We know what we're getting out of Taylor Moten here in Carolina. The offense should be better. And I feel like the moves to trade Chris McCaffrey away and to trade DJ Moore, which never made sense to me at all. I get trading up to get a quarterback, but giving up a receiver who could have helped your quarterback, which we saw how that played out last year. That never made a lot of sense to me, but that was in part because they were trying to get a quarterback. Now that they have, hopefully, fingers crossed, a quarterback, they should be able to keep players like Derek Brown long term and not trade him away unless he says, I want to leave. And I don't think he's going to want to leave Carolina because I do feel like this could be a rebuild that actually works this time. Um, no, I will not be at the draft in Detroit. Um, they have had the draft here in Charlotte. Maybe I'll go. Probably won't, but maybe. Uh, let's see. Already done more than fitter as far as Dan Morgan. Uh, Major W, glad to see Derek got his bag and is staying in the QC. Dan and Brant are cooking. <laughs> People are happy, man. I'm, I'm happy to see that. Time to go get Gilly. And as I mentioned with the salary cap, that opens up 
$8.4 million of space, about $11 million, uh, $11.4 million of cap space right now for the Carolina Panthers. So they can go out there and potentially add Stephon Gilmore. It also gives them space to go and sign their draft class, something that you cannot forget about the Panthers wanted to do. And we'll see how many guys they ended up taking, whether they trade up in the first round, which I don't think is going to be something that happens, or they trade back to get more draft compensation, which I do think is certainly a possibility for this team. This is a good step in the right direction for this team to bring in a player, if they have to bring in to keep a player like Derek Brown at the, the highest quality of positions. And someone brought this up on the mailbag earlier today. If you missed that, please go back and watch it here on YouTube. I feel like that's going to be an episode that no one watches now that this comes out. And this is obviously pressing news, but I'm here for you, the listener, and I appreciate all y'all for viewing and for listening and supporting me here on Locked On Panthers. But someone had brought up that, the Panthers needed to look at maybe adding a defensive lineman via the draft because looking at the offensive line, they brought in Hunt, they brought in Lewis. They've done a great job at addressing what was, of course, a weakness last year. And not the defensive line was a weakness last year. If you look at the Panthers being second to last in EPA, expected points added, that's what EPA stands for against the run last season. And you even saw it the first six weeks of the season, they give 130 yards plus on the ground every single week. And that's just not something that's going to help you win games they were better after the bye in the second half of the season db and the rest of those guys really held it down but still this was not a defensive line that played at a high level outside of him i do like the signing of Sean robinson as far as another run stopper knowing that was an issue for them shy tuttle he's got to be better probably his last year in carolina anyway so i'm not all that concerned long term about him but i do think that they need to try and do what the listener had told me try and get another combination like star and like KK that they had, which I would love to have that as well here in Carolina. But this is a good move. You have to show up your off your defensive line. You got to show up your offensive line. The line scrimmage is important. It does not matter who your quarterback is, who your wide receiver is, who your corners are and all that. If you cannot block and if you cannot get after the quarterback on the other side of the ball, you have to be good in the trenches. And quite honestly, the Panthers have sucked on a defensive line and in the trenches since like 2019 when they had Bruce Irvin and all those old dudes hanging on here in Carolina that season where they went six and 10, I believe McCaffrey had a thousand thousand and the team was no good. Now not having cam didn't help having Kyle Allen turn the ball over obviously did not help. But what did not help either was being as bad as they were on the defensive line and they had not been good on the offensive line. Now it looks like the offensive line, in theory, based off of the moves that they've made, now they spent a lot of money to do it. Hopefully, fingers crossed, they stay healthy, that continuity is there, and they play at the level that they're expected to play at. O-line should be good. D-line, you have Derek Brown. But right now, outside of him, still concerned. But I'm happy that he's here. Looking at some other uh, people saying, we got here, you got to be good in the trenches. Absolutely. Uh Judah King saying this was definitely not an overpay. No. And, you know, I guess I, I know I brought it up here with the Burns thing. And it's just frustrating to see this team continuously hit on first round picks and then to see guys like McCaffrey not here. And I'm not a big fan of paying running backs, but McCaffrey is different in my opinion. And we did see the Panthers got production out of Mike Davis. They got production out of Chuba and out of Deontay Foreman when McCaffrey wasn't around, just showing you why you don't have to pay those guys. He's still different, though, as far as what he's able to do on the field as just an overall playmaker. The Panthers need more playmakers, not less playmakers, especially for a team that is coming off a 2-15 and season and hasn't been to the playoffs since 2017. But we all know the story at this point in time. Still, this is a guy you build around, and I agree with you. Judah King here on the live stream on YouTube. You build around a guy like Derek Brown. Uh, another person saying uh, we got D nice two G. This was an o this he thinks this was an overpay like Brown, but damn, no pass rush doesn't don't equal twenty four mil. And as I brought up to y'all, if you were just joining now, looking at the rest of the guys around his age, Matt BK, he's getting ninety eight mil. Quentin Williams ninety six mil. Jeffrey Simmons ninety four mil. Dayron Payne ninety mil. Dexter Lawrence ninety mil. I understand about the lack of a pass rush from Derek Brown. And let me pull up his stats here um, on my browser just to look at what he's done. I know he, he only had two sacks this year. I understand. He, he's got eight sacks total in his career. Let's, how many sacks does Dexter Lawrence have? I don't sit here and watch a lot of Giants games, so I'm not really keen to know what he's done in his career. He has 21, 21 sacks for a player who's getting $90 million. Dayron Payne, I feel like he's a guy who gets after the passer too. Let's see, Daron Payne up in Washington. He has 30 sacks. Okay. Uh, I mean, you this you do have a point. The person out there on uh, YouTube right now is pointing out the fact that he does not get a lot of sacks. We know Quentin Williams. I need to look at his stats. We saw what he did to the damn offensive line. That was the first red flag last year. <laughs> Watching 
Uh, the preseason game that we saw, of course, against the Jets, but watching hard knocks and seeing Quinnen Williams have 11 sacks in practice, like, holy crap, dude, relax. Damn, that was that was concerning. So we should have known right then and there. I tried to be a little bit more patient and, ho and see it out, and we saw that it did not work out. Yeah, good point. Doesn't get a lot of sacks. Did have a career high this past year in sacks, I believe. Two? Was that a career high, or did he have two in another season? He had three, rather, his second year. We'll see what he can do. Todd Wash, the defensive line coach, came in last year, and he feels like he can get Derek Brown to be more of a pass rusher. But I got to go back and look at his college stats. I don't even think even in college – at Auburn, Derek Brown was that guy when it came to sacks. He was a complete monster, though, Like, but guys were able to get away. Uh, he had 12 and a half sacks in his career in college at Auburn. And his final two years where he was an All-American, four and a half sacks in 18, four in 19. The Panthers knew who they were drafting. And I understand the concern about, okay, well, he doesn't get a lot of sacks. Why are you paying that much? He's one of the top defensive linemen in the league. And he just came out and had 103 tackles, the most in league history. You're going to pay this guy, and you need to pay him. I, that, I just think it's a good deal. Hunter McDonald saying you're on YouTube, Brown over Burns all day. Uh, I would like to have both because you have to be good in the trenches, and they have one good player in the trenches. Yes, Clowney can be good. We'll see what he does this year. I'm hoping he plays well, obviously. Uh, just need to see the consistency, which I pointed out. Cornbread, <laughs> conbread maybe, saying Brown is top four DT in the league. This was a great deal and be cheap in two seasons. Well, yeah, you hope it's a great deal. You hope he keeps playing at the level that he has. And I've heard people say you're not going to pay because I think the Burns thing too. Someone was saying you don't give you don't want to give him that money because he hasn't earned it yet. It's like, well, yeah, I think about – Okay, are you going to just pay a guy, say, $30 million a year because of what they've done, or are you going to pay him because what you expect him to do? I think with the Rams, they paid Aaron Donald that money because of what he did and also what they expected him to continue to do. And with Derrick Brown, they're paying him for what he's done, but also what they expect him to do. They expect him to keep playing like one of the top five defensive tackles in the NFL. If you don't think he's going to keep playing at that level, then you don't give him this kind of money. And I think this was a good deal by the Carolina Panthers. One more quick ad read before some final thoughts. Got to get this out there to y'all. Talk about Robin Hood. Did you know that even if you have a 401k for retirement, you can still have an IRA. Robin Hood has, has the only IRA that gives you a 3% boost on every dollar you contribute when you subscribe to Robin Hood Gold. But get this. Now through April 30th, Robinhood is even boosting every single dollar you transfer in from other retirement accounts with a 3% match. That's right. No cap on the 3% match. Robinhood Gold gets you the most for your retirement thanks to their IRA with a 3% match. This offer is good through April 30. Get started at Robinhood.com slash boost. Subscription fees apply. And now for some legal info. Claim as of Q1 2024 validated by Radius Global Market Research. Investing involves risk, including loss. Limitations apply to IRAs and 401ks. 3% match requires Robinhood Gold for one year from the date of first 3% match. Must keep Robinhood IRA for five years. 3% matching on transfers is subject to specific terms and conditions. Robinhood IRA available to U.S. customers in good standing. Robinhood Financial LLC member SIPC is a registered broker dealer. Derek Brown has signed an extension here in Carolina, keeping him here for the next four years. I'm interested to see if he's still going to play on the fifth-year option, which is due to pay him $11.6 million, .6 million this year. It, this contract extension does open up $8.4 million as a cap space, so maybe now his cap it goes down to $3.2 million, and he still gets the money for this year. And then, of course, it'll be the signing bonus, and then it'll be the $4 million after that per year. That's what I expect it will be. So at least the next three years, Derek Brown is going to be a Carolina Panther. Then the final two years of that deal, I would expect to be where the Panthers could potentially get out of it, and there's not a lot of guaranteed money left over. We'll see. Once that gets updated, I'll give you all – an update once I do see that on over the cap and the contract websites. Let's see. Uh, D line like eight burns. Okay, let's see. Trash teams like the Giants do moves and contracts like Burns. This is a good sign. Hmm, I mean, Panthers are coming off a two and 15 season, so I don't know how you're <laughs> going to be able to call the Giants trash, but sure. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm a fan too, y'all, but come on. Uh, Tory, <laughs> Tory Benner saying Derek Brown's wall, not too mobile, but very hard to get past in the trenches. We need healthy, reliable players to build a team around. I'm constantly optimistic about the direction of this team. Uh, consistent pressure, hold stopper. Yeah, he's good. He's a good player. And the Panthers need more good players. And defensively, when you look at this team, you needed to have someone like Brown who you could build around and who you knew would be around for this rebuild. And I think DB is going to be around now, of course, that they've signed him. But I, I felt like he should have been around and he's going to be around. So now you have Derek Brown there at the defensive line position to be around for the next 
three plus years. Hopefully next five years, when you look at the fifth year option this year and the four year deal, hopefully he plays out the entire deal. So the next five years got Derek Brown as Carolina Panther. And I think that's outstanding. Take him in him into his early thirties. Now, will he get a deal like Chris Jones got at 31? I don't know. Let's see how he plays in the next couple of seasons. I hope he continues to uh, progress as a pass rusher in the interior that would help this team immensely, especially knowing the concerns or questions rather uh, at edge with cloudy this year and possibly next year is also being here in Carolina with one for the next two years. If he does stick around and then what DJ Johnson provides, what Amari Barno provides, what a potential draft pick maybe at 33 or 39, in the second round provide for, to the Carolina Panthers to have someone like Brown there in the middle to maybe get more experience as an edge rush or as a pass rusher in the interior and help out the pass rush there. That will help this team immensely as they try to figure out who they're, Top tier long term edge pairing is going to be defensively, whether Gerald Barrow's here or someone else takes over as a DC in, in the years to come. This is a good sign. Linebacker, they're going to have to find someone because Shaq's probably last year of his deal. Josie Jewell going to be here for two years, just looking at his contract. They can't really get out of it next year. Um, I mean, if he plays terribly like Hayden Hurst did, then yeah, they can, but I don't expect that to be the case. I don't think we're going to have a 52 situation like we had back in 2020 with that former Temple player who Matt Brule, Rule brought here to Carolina. And in the secondary, all the safeties are free agents after this year. The ones that are going to be the starters, they're going to play a lot of snaps. That's Woods, that's Scott, that's Fuller, the two guys that recently signed to have experience in L.A. playing the system and know Jero Vero quite closely. And then at corner, you need J.C. just to stay healthy. If you can have J.C. holding it down and sticking around, getting a new deal, and you already have D.B. signed up, you get a linebacker, maybe Peyton Wilson, that's something to build around. You need to have some guys to build around. They, it, we lo- we thought we had it here in Carolina. You thought with Burns and with Brown and with Luvu, with Chin, with Horn, that those were going to be the five guys. And you, you can't pay everybody. There's a salary cap. I understand that. Yes, cap's not real, but it is. Uh, I understand that you can't keep everyone around. But to go from thinking that those five guys at all three levels were going to be around to just Derek Brown, he's for sure staying around. And there's still questions about JC. That's a little unsettling. But as this listener has said here on the YouTube stream, I'm cautiously optimistic about what Brant Tillis, Dan Morgan, and what Dave Canales can do in Carolina. As long as Daddy Warbucks stays the hell out of the way. <laughs> All right. So, and Travis Southern right here saying, I'm very excited, but also nervous about this team so far. It seems to be in a better place than last year, but lots of room for improvement still. And this is the thing I want to just tell y'all. I don't expect this team to do a lot this upcoming season. But hell, man, just enjoy the ride. It's You only get 17 Sundays a year. No reason to just be pissed off and to be miserable all the time. Just It's football. Like You're not – it's not really having that much of an impact on your life, let's be honest. Um, but come on, it's just football. Obviously, we want the Panthers to win. We want to see the city alive and buzzing wherever you live. You, you want us to have good Sundays. But just enjoy this ride because I do feel like the current structure and how we probably felt like this before, but you look at the current structure and how things are set up, this could be the path forward to actually having sustained success, which we were told was going to happen when David Tepper fired Ron Rivera four years ago. We're still waiting. We're still waiting. But the hope is that this can finally work out. So just enjoy the ride. Be happy that Derek Brown's sticking around. Got a good dude staying on for your team who's a good player. This is the path forward for the Carolina Panthers. So congratulations, Derek Brown, again, signing a four-year $96 million extension with 63.31 something million dollars guaranteed. 60, where is it? 63.165 million dollars guaranteed. So, congrats to Derek Brown for sticking around here in Carolina and good business, Dan Morgan, good business, uh, Brant Tillis, and of course, I guess David Tepper. Good job letting them do this and staying the hell out of the way. All right. That's going to wrap up this emergency episode of the Lockdown Panthers podcast, part of the Lockdown Podcast Network, hosted by yours truly, Julian Council. Again, y'all subscribe or follow the show for free on YouTube or wherever you listen to your favorite podcasts. And be sure to follow me, Julian Council, on Twitter at Julian Council, where I'll be back with you next Friday, answering your weekly Friday mailbag questions once again. And maybe there'll be breaking news after that episode comes out, like today's episode with the breaking news of Derek Brown being extended here in Carolina. But in the meantime, be safe, be happy, be whole as always and forever, y'all. Keep pounding, and I'll talk to you on Monday where Jordan Reed, ESPN NFL Draft Analyst, will join the show to give us his perspective on how the Panthers should go about day two and the rest of the 2024 NFL Draft in three weeks' time.